Hi, everyone. Brian here with the Fanboy Factor again. Today, I'm speaking with Vivek J. Tatari, author of The Fifth Beetle, The Brian Epstein Story. Uh, welcome. to. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thanks uh, for talking with me. Uh, now, we're, we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of this <laughs> the book. Art. It's amazing. It, it seems like time has flown and it's, yeah. you know, it, it's a, it's an amazing book, extremely well written, very depth, uh, very, you know, it's a loving tribute to Brian Epstein. The art by uh, Andrew uh, Robinson and Kyle Baker is just, it, it complements everything in there. It, it's extremely nice blend. Thank you so much. So, did you ever think it, you know you'd be celebrating this ten years of this book? <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, so you know the the honest answer is like it is yes, but certainly not in this way. You right. know? Not to this level, not to this extreme. Um, you know, I, I knew when the book came out that um you know i i don't want to sound arrogant but i did know it was special right. you know andrew robinson and kyle baker did just breathtaking work with the yep. art you know i believed in my story my the, or my script i guess i should say and the brian epstein story is a very personal one for me um you know he 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 has inspired my life in so many ways both my career as an executive in the entertainment industry as well as just my 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 chasing my dreams you know <laughs> he he engineered beatlemania and and how he did that was so inspiring from a business perspective but he was gay and jewish and from liverpool yeah but if the gay jewish liverpool 26 year old kid could bring the world the beatles why couldn't a weirdo indian kid from new york's lower east side uh produce musicals and and write comic books <laughs> so, so i knew that this story was inspiring i always thought the message of the brian epstein story is that no dream is too impossible and no person too unlikely to realize that dream and, yeah, and that to me is is an inspiring human story right it's a timeless story you don't need to be a beatles fan or a music fan no uh, it's... to uh to appreciate that so, you know, and, and from a publishing industry perspective, you know, back then we 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 believed we had an evergreen is what we said. And, and that's right. a, you know industry term for for a book that, you know, will stay in print and will always have somebody that wants to read it. So that's what I expected. Like, I'll be right. honest, you'd expect that 10 years on the book would be in print and, <laughs> and, and there would still be an audience for it. There would still be people discovering it. Um, but I never dreamed that it would, you know, win the Eisner and the Harvey and get inducted and, you know, be be added to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame library and archive. <laughs> I never dreamed we'd put out a 10 year anniversary edition that has a soundtrack in it and a playlist. Right. You could hear the songs in the book and a new introduction by Pearl Jam's manager, who, Kelly Curtis, who was a, a huge inspiration to me. Uh, in addition to Brian, he was another person that greatly inspired my life. Um, new artwork by by Chris Brunner and Rico Renzi that's gorgeous and um, you know that none of that did, did I imagine <laughs> you know so yes did I imagine we'd be celebrating yeah I kind of did but right. celebrating like this <laughs> not in a why in, in any wild dream you know I especially love the uh, soundtrack that you put it in because I, I read it Thanks. saw the soundtrack and then I went back again reread it and I could you know it just knowing all the Beatles songs, I could hear the tracks in my head as I'm going through the book. And it was such yeah. a nice compliment. I, th I think it's really cool. Thank you so much for saying that, because that is exactly what I uh, what I was hoping for. You know, I really <laughs> hope that people who pick up this book, uh, either for the first time or, or old fans, will will have that experience. You know, it, it's um, it is such a cheesy thing when when uh, when there's a new edition when creators say things like it's the version I always wanted to <laughs> see, but but it's true. This is this yeah. is the version I always wanted people to have. The version where you could get that playlist and you saw it. You know, there's a QR code right. so you can go straight to 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 the playlist and and do exactly what you did. You know, with the liner notes explaining why I picked the song for these scenes and this page. I really want people to read the book 
or read it again if you're an old fan with the playlist. And and as you as you know, um, I won't give it away totally to folks who haven't uh, haven't read the book the the expand the the anniversary edition yet. But the <laughs> is not just Beatles songs, nor is it only songs from the '60s. Right. You know, there's, a, there's everything from Bauhaus and Rufus Wainwright and the Stone Roses and Ella Fitzgerald and um, you know, there is uh there's sixpence none the richer makes an appearance. I mean, yeah. it's, really, it's kind of all over the place. Um but, but, it, but it works, it works. It works. It works. And uh and so I um I really uh hope that people will discover it in the way that you just did. So that was my intention with this with this new edition. And I, I really think it's um gosh, I know I'm I'm sounding like I'm patting myself on the back, <laughs> but I do think it's special and I'm really proud of it. It really is. I mean, it's definitely one of these books. Uh, there's there's few comic stories out there where you can read it and pick up something a little new every time. Uh, Watchmen is definitely one of those books where every time you read it, you pick up something new. And I felt that with uh, you know the Fifth Beetle, just like I, I've read it a bunch of times, and it, I, I'm picking up like new aunts and brand new nuances to it that I didn't see before, and it, I. I really enjoy that aspect. It just feels every time I read it, it feels fresh, which is really cool. Man, thank you. Good God, you you are literally the second person today that compared this book to The Watchmen, and that's <laughs> that's like honestly, my knee jerk reaction is like that's absurd. You know, <laughs> I mean, I am a fanboy first, and wow, you know. Uh, so, look, I I hope that we've created something that will will stand the test of time the way the Watchmen did um, and uh, and have anniversary editions right. that, are, that are meaningful the way the Watchmen has. But I would never presume to uh, to to put myself in that in that category. I just, <laughs> I'm a fanboy first, but but I will I will accept the compliment in the spirit in which it was intended. But uh, but you humble me. Let me just say that. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I have uh, some old friends who are like huge Beatles fan to the point where uh, when we get together we always do a Beatles brunch on Sunday and nice. I introduced this to them and they came and they're not comic readers either but they came back and they're raving about it and th mind you this was just the wow. first edition I mean it, but it's, it's just kind. they're raving about it and they just they're they're really huge Beatles fans like I said it's just so it, they That's couldn't awesome. get enough That's of this awesome. Look, I, I mean, I really hope my, what we intended to do was create something that huge Beatles fans would find something new in. You know, the, right. the Bernstein story is not widely known. Um, you know, it's it's more known now than it was 10 years ago, but yep. still people don't know much about his story and they don't know that it's an inspiring human story and not just a music industry or a right. tale. Um, so, you know, I did really want to create something that Beatles fans would find something new and fresh and exciting in. But I also, um, you know, probably what's been most gratifying is when folks who are not Beatles fans or, you know, when when they say that they've gotten something out of this book. Although I'm always skeptical about anyone who says that they don't like the Beatles, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, those be, but people who aren't huge Beatles fans, when they say they've enjoyed the book and also the support from the LGBTQ community, um, you know, that, that portraying Brian as, you know, a gay man who against all odds um, you know, at a time of where homosexuality was literally illegal. Illegal, yeah. A, I mean, it's certainly not, uh, it's certainly facing, um, you know, it's not like LGBTQ rights aren't still under siege. Right. But, but back then it was literally. It was, yeah. In, in, in England, yeah. I remember it was literally illegal to be. Totally. You know, so, so you know, the fact that that community has embraced the book, um, the Jewish community has embraced the book, you know, because because Brian, um, you know, did what he did what he did in the face of pervasive anti-Semitism and, and right. at a time where um, Jews just did not work extensively in the music business. I know that's obviously changed and there's a number of very successful high profile Jewish executives now <laughs> but there weren't back then. They were few and far between. Um, you know, watching these other communities, the ones that you might not intuitively think would be um, would be fans of this book and P and Oh my gosh, you know, I'm a huge comic book fan. And and there have been people who told me this was the first graphic novel they read. <laughs> That's been a huge joy. And then I tell them, now you need to go read Watchmen. And not, <laughs> like, you know, like, let me give you a reading list. Uh, so <laughs> I feel. But, uh, but you know, if I could really be the first and open people's eyes up to this, this is a medium, 
man, though that's uh that will be a life's work done well for sure. Now I, I gotta ask you, and I back in about uh when it, the book came out, 2013, 2014, you said you were trying to make a movie on it. Now I know you're a very busy person, you got your hands on a lot of different things. Is there an update to that at all? Oh gosh. So I uh I will apologize in advance for uh for for the fact that I can't tell you too much. Right, understood. Uh, I will say that these these things take forever. Um, you know, to be 10 years in in and have uh, an adaptation not come out to the layman might feel like like ridiculous, but uh yeah. but someone on the industry it's kind of how it goes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was like deck, you know, turning the X-Men into a franchise that film I believe took 15 years. So these things do take time. So I will say that. So I will, <laughs> will beg patience um, to any fan out there that is wondering what's going on. Um, and look, we're just coming out of a writer's strike, you right. know, historic 148 day writer strike. And that put a, put a halt in things and the actor strike is still happening still going, and yep. that's causing some, some turbulence for our plans. Um, so I will just say that I'm, I'm still very passionate about the idea of adapting this for film or television. I will just, I need to be a little vague about it if you don't mind. Right. <laughs> um, but just know that it's still a passion of mine. It's still something that's in the works. Um, and I, I I don't want to comment on rumors, but uh, I will say some of the rumors are true. <laughs> just, uh, just beg a little more patience before I can be more um, specific. If I could just get into, the, I mean, you really have, a knack for dialogue in the way set, you, you, I, I, I've read a lot of, you know, like you, I, I read a lot of comic books and I've read, you know, some people where you really can't tell the difference between one character to the next character, but you really have just like Brian Epstein is just the, such this gentleman. And then you have the Beatles kind of these not so serious kind of goofy guys, how you expect them to be. And it's just, the contrast and the dialogue just flows very nicely within the entire book. It's, it's really a pleasure to read. Oh, thank you kindly for saying that. Um, you know, honestly, that was research and team. You know, I, um, I researched this book extensively. Uh, I, I think I mentioned earlier, I discovered the Brian Epstein story when I was a business student, you know, wanting, wanting to learn more about the business of, of music and you know there were no online resources at the time this was the right. 90s there was no yeah. wikipedia there was no youtube there was no google yeah i remember those days i mean i i had to research this book by talking to people who knew him you know i i read every beatles book i could get my hands on and i'd read like 300 page books about the beatles that would have 10 or 15 decent pages about brian You're right and but 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 uh, they would paint a picture of the people who knew him. So I would, would contact those people and just do interviews. And, um, and it was through that, that I, I really pieced my story together. So I really spent a lot of time asking things like, how did he speak? What was, what were his mannerisms like? Because I couldn't just pull, I mean, now you can actually find some, there's still not many, you right. can find some things if you go to, to Google and YouTube and whatnot. Um, but I did a lot of research around that. And I also, when I mentioned team, you know, there, there are a lot of uncredited people that really helped with the Fit Beetle, my friends from Liverpool, who I would <laughs> send drafts of the script and I'd be like, does this sound accurate? Um, and, and friends from Liverpool whose parents I sent the script because I didn't want it to just sound accurate. I wanted it to sound time appropriate. I was like, right. you know, the kids in what in Liverpool are saying are using different slang than the kids in Liverpool used in the 1960s. <laughs> so, you know, I, I really tried hard to um to get the dialogue right. And it and shows a lot it of shows. research and, and spoke to a, and added a lot of people to the the extended team um who helped in 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 getting this done. So I, it might be my script that that uh that I Andrew and Kyle worked on to worked with to to design their art. But there were a lot of there was a lot of research and a lot of input from others um, before that script uh, moved forward. So thank thank you for noticing and <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely you know when I read it, I could definitely feel your passion in the work right there. So it, it's it, again you know just being a fanboy, I've read a lot of stuff where you can just you can tell when someone's kind of phoning it in, but you just 
your passion is just you really put your heart and soul into it and it really shows thank you for saying that i mean it's uh this really was a labor of love and you know, I, I uh, turned 50 this year and I hope I'll have many decades ahead of me. So this is a bit of a weird thing to say, but I really do think of this as my life's work. You know, it, it truly is something that I, I could not be more proud of, more passionate about seeing this anniversary edition come out and seeing adaptations of it happen in the future. Um, uh, so, you know, it's, um, it, it really just has been a, it been a, joy to do it. I mean, the passion is real. Um, so I, I, I really do appreciate you noting it. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I hope that the 10 year anniversary edition takes that passion and, and, and gives, gives old fans something to something new, new to, to enjoy. Uh, so let me, so the book comes out, uh, November 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. I'm <laughs> plugging my, I realize my, my computer is I'll unplug so let me <laughs> plug it in so I don't die on you while we chat. Sorry. Uh, and it's being uh, printed again by uh, Dark Horse Comics. It, yep. I, it is up for pre order right now. I've seen it on Amazon, on Dark Horse's own website, uh, Things from Another Planet, which is their sister site. Uh, I mean, I, it, like I said, I, I've shown people who are not comic readers this book and they just. They thought it was amazing. And, yeah. you know, what you added to it is, you know, especially the soundtrack, the, the genius piece of work. And it's just definitely, even if you own it, I really think you need to go get this 10th anniversary just just for, you know, especially for just for the soundtrack. <laughs> no, look, we're really excited about it. You know, also in the interim, um, you know, Dark Horse uh, entered a partnership with Random House. So this this book is coming out technically on Dark Horse slash Random House. So we have, you know, that um, machine, really. There's such a big company behind us this right. time. So I, I really, um, I'm really hopeful that we'll also make a lot of new fans, you know. And uh, and as I was saying earlier, this is the version of the book that I'm, I, that I'm most proud of. So... I'm really excited to get it out there. I, I'm proud of the soundtrack. This new introduction by Kelly Curtis, as I mentioned, is really quite wonderful. The new cover by Chris and Chris Brunner and Rico Renzi is wonderful. Um, it has an expanded sketchbook edition uh, in yep. the back. You know, the, the we had put out an expanded edition some time ago and given um, Andrew and Kyle a chance to put some some new stuff in there. And now we have some new artists who also now have a chance to. <laughs> to you know show off their wares so that's kind of exciting um it's it's um it's 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 going to be a great month i'm i'm really uh, like you know and and it's I also neat that we are releasing it literally you know the the release date is october 21st and 22nd for both the comic stores and the and the physical bookstores and that's almost a 10 years to the date oh, you know, wow. <laughs> we, we released it just before thanksgiving uh 10 years ago so it's um it's amazing to to look at, at how far we've come and and to know that we still have still have work to do and still have new fans to make. And um, as I said, it's uh, it really is something I, I'm as passionate about today as I was then. Well, let me just say to wrap up, just congratulations on 10 years. Looking forward Thank to an, so another 10 years on it and uh, many very, more. <laughs> you're very kind. Vivek, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And, thank you for having me. And for those uh, watching this at home, it, Look down in the comics, and I'll have a link where you can pre-order your own copy. Ah, uh, thank you for that. Yes, <laughs> if I can, uh, if I can make a quick plug, um, you can get more information about the Fifth Beetle at fifthbeetle.com. Fifth Beetle is also um, on Twitter. I guess it's now X, uh, yeah. <laughs> Instagram, and Facebook at, at Fifth Beetle. You can also find me on all the social media platforms at, at Vivek J Tuari. And my company's website is tawarient.com. Um, so, you know, if Brian Epstein uh, taught me anything, he also taught me the importance of making sure that you promote your, your stuff. So, uh, so, right. so allowing me to make a shameless plug um, <laughs> uh, for staying in touch and, and learning more about what we have coming for the Fit Beetle and, and for my company in general. So Definitely. Sounds great. Thanks again, Vivek. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks.